All right, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai. Once again, it's another video. And this video comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai, Bar Shem Rakar Kodash. Definitely all praises and glories due. And, um, this video was put up by, I believe the brother's name is Yawanathan, the brother right here. And I got that from the comment that was placed there by Bow Down to Slaughter. And I think he's out of the state of Virginia. I could be wrong. He does videos with this other elder brother. And um, if he should suit it. If you should see this video, you can put a link to his channel in the comment section. Uh, so, um, he put this video, or this video was uploaded entitled, Shit is Fixing to Get Real. <laughs> Shit is Fixing to Get Real. Yeah. And uh, that's pretty much what we're waiting for. We're waiting for all hell to break loose. Because we have faith in Yahweh, Bar Shem Yahweh Shai, that we will be protected in, in those times. Because we have done and are doing the work that Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai chose us to do. And because of that, the scriptures don't lie, you know. As a matter of fact, let me go into a scripture before I, I play. I'm going to play some of that video and, uh, you know, make comments towards it, what the brother was saying. Because, I, I, you know, I liked what the brother was saying. Hopefully this video will be edifying to you, uh, you brothers and you sisters out there of the household of faith. But um, let me go to the book of Revelation the third chapter. Yeah, so because we have, uh, and then I'll show you another scripture. Because we have dedicated our lives to serving Yahweh Shem Shai in this ministry, when all hell breaks loose, and all hell will break loose, Paul Kersey, with your faithless, non believing ass. All hell, when all hell breaks loose, man, when they make this thing mandatory to, to see hip. We believe by faith. Remember, as it is written, this whole thing of ours is based upon faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. By the way, it's 618 in the morning, so that's why I'm talking low. And if, if the volume is too low, then you, you need to turn up your volume. Okay, somebody put a comment, the volume is too low. Well, turn up your volume, man. Okay, turn it to the max. That way you can hear. Um, Revelation, the third chapter. So we believe all hell is going to break loose, and we, we, we know that the scriptures say that Yahweh Bashim Yahshua will protect us in those times. And that's just the faith you got to have. It's, it's not complicated. It's just very simple. This is the book of Revelation 3 and 10. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. What is that? This knowledge, this truth. And while we were keeping it, we, we were suffering. You know, we suffer being defamed, like the Apostle Paul said. You know, people lie on us, you know, the, the, the grape doctrine, calling us six-year-old rapists and all that bullshit. That's part of being in this knowledge and this truth, suffering. You know, some brothers have gotten beaten up, being in the truth, you know. Uh, what else? You know, all kind of shit that we've suffered while being in the ministry. So that's, that is what is meant by the word of my patience. Because if you look up the word patience, it's from the Latin meaning to suffer. And like I always tell you brothers and you, you sisters that watch my videos, this thing of ours is about suffering. If somebody were to ask me, well, this ministry, what is it really about? I would say it's really about suffering, but suffering in righteousness, just like our Lord suffered, you know, and our Lord, Yahweh Shai was made perfect through sufferings, tells us that in the book of Hebrews, the second chapter, the 10th verse. So it says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, this, this is talking to us, those of us that fit the scripture, that, that have really kept this knowledge, this truth, all right, really believed in it, 
And above all, we fear Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai. That's the most important part. We fear Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai. So because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. So the hour of temptation, we know that to be when Esau makes this sea hip mandatory. And the brother uh, Amawan Gabar, and I'll probably do a video later today, Lord will, on his dream, because I, I just got done watching the whole video. The, the brother Amawan Gabar, that was really a vision that he received from the Heavenly Father Yahweh through his son Yahweh Shai. And pretty much, you know, in his vision, people had lined up to take the, the sea hip, even certain in, individuals from, you know, it makes me scared to say it, certain individuals from GMS, man. Because Elder Pastor asked him uh, Saturday, you know, after camp, you know, we all met up and, um, uh, you know, uh, El Elder Pastor told Amon Gabbard to tell the dream to the rest of the brothers. And he told the dream, and we all had this this, this solemn look on our faces, like, wow, even guys in GMS going to take the sea hip? That's what Amon Gabbard said. That's what he saw in his vision, you know? So, you know, this, this thing is really scary, man. But you know what? If you have, if you have two things, if you have the fear of, of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, and you have the faith in Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, there's no way you can lose, man. There's nothing that can rock you. There's nothing that can shake you in the in this ministry, you know. Anyway, going back to the scripture, because thou has kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. So we're going to be kept from uh, bowing down to the will of Esau, which is to have every, everyone see him. I mean, if you think about, uh, you know, you, you go back into history, you, these other kingdoms that we were under, where the king made it a decree that you had to bow down and worship the, his idol. And what did our forefathers do? They trusted in Yahweh Shem Yahshai, and they were delivered. You know, one name that comes to mind is Daniel. When Nebuchadnezzar made it uh, a decree that you had to bow down and worship his idol, and Daniel didn't do it, and he was delivered. You know, uh, he, the uh, I know that I don't know their names in Hebrew, but uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, those those were their uh, heathen names, uh, but they were Israelites, right? Uh, they didn't bow down to. Um, Neb, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's idol, and they were delivered. There's a book in the, the Apocrypha, uh, it's called The Song of the Three Holy Children, and it's talking about them, and that's a great faith booster to us. See, do, these are the things we're supposed to read to build our faith, build our knowledge and faith. So when, the, when that time comes, and we're fast approaching that time, when all hell breaks loose, that's what's going to keep our sanity. That's what's going to keep our stability. Isaiah 33 and 6. And above all, prayer. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Brothers, we got to pray, man. And I, you know, we got to pray every day, man. And, uh, I've, I've, you know, I'm not trying to elevate myself, but I've really in, incorporated that to pray every day, especially before I leave the house. Because I can feel those negative energy, the negative energy out there, the negative spirits. You can feel it. If you're a spiritual man or a spiritual woman in this ministry, you can feel it. You can feel the negativity out here. And it's growing It's growing more and more every day. Okay? Anyway, <laughs> uh, so like if I'm, I hope I'm not ranting, but, you know, you know I, I just have to get, get that out there to comfort who needs to be comforted. You know, Isaiah 40 and 1, comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Anyway, Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world. And that's when Esau makes this sea hip mandatory. And he will do that to try them that dwell upon the earth. So the heavenly father is not a man that he should lie. And that, by the way, those were, those were the words of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai said that to Apostle John when he, when he was on the island of Patmos receiving all those visions. That's why those words were written in red. All right, uh, let's get numbers. And remember, 
Never forget the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai was speaking the words of his father, Yahweh. There's not a man that he should lie. So whatever he says, we can bank on it. And that, that's the beauty of knowing his word. Uh, Numbers 23 and 19, it says, The Heavenly Father is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Have he said, and shall he not do it? See, so he said, because you kept the you kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from the hour of temptation. That's all we need to know. He's going to take care of us, man. Okay, that's what he said. Neither the son of man that he should repent, have he said, and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Then another thing that comes to mind is um, what the Apostle Paul said. Something called the immutability of his counsel. All right. It is right here. It's the book of Hebrews 6 and uh, 6 and 16. For men verily swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein the heavenly father willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise. Who's that? That's us, man. We're the heirs of promise. What is the promise? That we are going to be made perfect, even as Yahweh Shai was made perfect. But even before that, we're going to be delivered from, from the certain destruction that's coming to this planet, uh, planet Earth, in particular America, and certain parts of the planet Earth. When Yahweh Bashim Yahshai brings that destruction, we're going to be delivered from it. Okay? So it says, uh, The Heavenly Father willing more abundantly to show unto the, unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel. The immutability of his counsel. That word immutability means it does not change. All right? That's where you get the word mutation. Mutation means to change. Immutability means it does not change. The Heavenly Father don't change. The scriptures tell us that. Confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for the Heavenly Father to lie. Now, I'm, I'm, the reason why I'm reading this scripture is I'm building on what is, what is said in Numbers uh, 23 and 19. OK, it says that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for the most high to lie. And his son is the same way. He's going, his son is going to say the same words that his father said. Uh, we might have a strong consolation. See, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge. Yeah, from 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 this world, we have fled for refuge in Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. We have fled the pollutions of this world, you know, the stupidity, the nonsense of this world, you know, the hypocrisy of this world for refuge in Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. Absolutely. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. And that hope is Yahweh Shai. Our hope is in Yahweh Shai. Absolutely. He's the one that entered within the veil. As a matter of fact, when he gave up the spirit, uh, the veil ripped, all right, which symbolizes that all of us now, all of us Israelites, that is, now have hope in Yahweh Shai. He's our savior, beginning with the elect. And when he comes back, who's he going to gather? The scriptures tell us he's going to gather his elect. And we hope that we're part of that elect. Okay? Now, let's get one more scripture. And then we're going to go to the video. Uh, Psalms, the 91st chapter. Psalms, the 91st chapter. Uh, and the ninth verse. Because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge. Now, that's the previous scripture, uh, Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, 
even the most high thy habitation. Right, that's us. All we all we do is think about Yahweh Shem Shai. And you know, all we do is think about, you know, those of us that do these videos, we you know all that's all we think about. Okay, I gotta do a video, I gotta do a video. Okay, I gotta go out in the street and teach. We, we go out in the street and teach to show our faith at this point. We don't need to, but we, we do it to show our faith, to show our faith and obedience in Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Okay, because Yahweh Shai said to go to the highways and the byways. That's in the book of Luke, the 14th chapter. So that's why we do it, to show our faith and obedience in Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. And then when we're not out on the street teaching, we do these videos. So we have made Yahweh Bashim Yahshai our habitation. Absolutely. Psalm 91 and 9, because thou has made the Lord, Yahweh Shai, which is my refuge, that's our refuge. Look up the word refuge, by the way. Even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. And remember, the most high is not a man that he should lie. Okay, but the key is you have to make Yahweh Shai your habitation, meaning that's all you think about. Is it not written, love the Heavenly Father with your mind, body, and soul? Well, there you go. And we actually practice that. Okay, and above all, we fear, man. The hell with some love. We fear Yahweh Shai. Fear, fear lasts longer. <laughs> all right? <laughs> we fear Yahweh Shai. Absolutely. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. So we, we know we got the angels around us, man. We fear Yahweh Shai. Okay, so that should be really comforting. All right, so let's get into the video. All right, it's starting to get it's, it's starting to get nippy out here because the, the recent recent years we ain't really had much of a winter. I believe through the spirit, the most are gonna bring a, a good winter this year, man. I hope, Lord willing, man, he gonna bring a good. Yeah, I believe that too. I believe this winter is gonna be terrible. All right, real cold, snowy, especially up here in the Northeast and the North period, you know? So, you know, we got to get our minds ready for that. And guess what? Unless it's a full-fledged blizzard, we're going to be out there teaching teaching the, the, the word, man, okay? So we're getting our minds prepared for that. It's winter this year, man. All right, and Lord willing... He let this devil do what he the fuck he gotta do, man. You know, just bring it, man. Bring the persecution. You know, um, lock this society down, crash the dollar. All right, uh, cause the EMP attack. Whatever the fuck you gotta do. Yeah, man. You know, King Masha used to say years ago. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> he would say, "I wish the Most High stopped dragging his feet." You know, in other words, that was King Masha's way of saying. Why don't the Lord hurry it up? And, you know, pretty much that's the, the attitude you come to after you've been serving in the ministry for many years. You know, you want you want to see what the scriptures tell us is inevitable, which is the destruction of, um, you know, Esau's society, Esau's kingdom. You know, but that can't happen. Uh, you know, that uh, Yahweh Shai can't come back until until and destroy the society until this man rise up and fulfill prophecy you know uh make this sea hip mandatory bring bring the uh you know the hell that's coming with it matter of fact let me bring in the scripture revelation 12 and 12. you know in other words before it gets gets good it's got to get worse How's that saying go? It's always darkest before the dawn. So we're about to enter some real dark times before the dawn comes. Who's the dawn? Yahweh Shai is the dawn. Okay, uh, Revelation 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil, who's this devil? Esau, Edom, beginning with the top banking families. Okay, the top banking families start with them. Uh, for the devil has come down. They're the main ones who want everybody uh, electronically tagged. Okay? For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. So, yeah. So, like the brother was saying, you want to fun. You know, why don't Esau just hurry up and do what he got to do? 
You know, just bring it, man. You know, you already got the minds of the people. What are you waiting for? But, you know, they can't move unless the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through Son Yahweh Shai, give them the, the green light. Because in reality, it's really the Heavenly Father on the left-hand side making those moves. Okay? So we understand that. We understand the duality of the Heavenly Father, that he controls both sides. Esau is nothing but his sword. Even King David said, deliver me from the wicked. That's Esau Edom, which is thy sword. So we understand that. You know, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath. So that great wrath is on its way, because he knoweth that he have but a short time. And that great wrath is going to be directed to you, you, uh, you wicked ass Israelites out there. We don't have to worry about it because we have made the Heavenly Father our habitation. We're going to be protected. But you wicked ass Israelites out there, you wicked ass Israelites, uh, Israelite men and women and children, <laughs> be very afraid. All right. Because as it is written, this devil, he don't bear the sword in vain. Okay. Let's get Isaiah 10 and 5. Isaiah 10 and 5. Oh, Assyrian, the modern day Assyrian is who? Esau, Edom, they're the modern day Assyrian. Go into the history of the of uh, the Israelites when they were in captivity underneath the Assyrians. The Assyrians were brutal, man. Okay, well, Esau is going to be even more brutal than the than the Assyrians. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger. See, so the Heavenly Father controls that rod. All right, the rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand. Another word for staff is power. In their hand is mine indignation. See? So the Heavenly Father is going to use Esau to punish the majority of his people. Two thirds, you know. He's going to use Esau. Then he's going to use the, um, you know, those missiles. Then he's going to use even the chariots that the Lord is going to be coming in to bring destruction upon two thirds of his people. Two thirds of you Israelites out there of all the respective tribes. Especially the ones that dwell here in America, man. The Heavenly Father is going to bring some brutal judgments upon you. Okay, and he's going to use Esau among many things to do it. This is what I'm reading here. O oh, Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, because the Heavenly Father is upset with the majority of his people. Because they refuse to get right. The men as well as the women. And the children. All right, slay utterly old and young, both both men, uh, both How's it go? Slay utterly old and young, both, uh, matter of fact, you know what? Let me just get it. Ezekiel. Who's that? Ezekiel. Um, bear for me for a minute. Ezekiel 6 and 9 or 9. Let's see, Ezekiel. Yeah, Ezekiel 9, and uh, I'll start the fourth verse. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry. Now that mark is this knowledge, this truth. That, that word mark there is a totally different mark from what is said in Revelation 13 and 16. All right, that 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 mark here, <laughs> I believe in the Hebrew is kwai kwai, which means uh, exemption from judgment. So that's what this knowledge does for us, is, is it, it exempts us from judgment. Okay, um, no, kwai kwai is in uh, Leviticus. That's a different mark. This mark here is the, the Hebrew uh, thawa, which means exemption from judgment. There you go. Mark as a sign of exemption from judgment. So that's what this, this knowledge does. You know, one, one scripture that comes to mind is 2 Timothy 1 and 18. All right, 2 Timothy 1 and 18. Let's see what that says. Oh, is it 1 Timothy? Let me read. 1 Timothy. Okay. 
Okay, this is it. Uh, James, it's actually James 1 and 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. So what's that engrafted word? This knowledge, this truth, okay? And it's able to do what? Save our souls. So going back to um, Ezekiel 9, so now you know what that mark is, all right? Uh, Ezekiel 9 and 4, and the, and the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry, for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And that's us. You know, all the shit that's going on out here, you know, we're mad as hell. And that's why we're asking Yahweh about Shimei Shai to put the spirit on this devil to do what he got to do. So this society can be destroyed. And, uh, you know, our, our society can come into, into power. And that is the kingdom of Yahweh Shai, which by default is the kingdom of Israel. That's, that's our earnest prayer. Uh, uh, the fifth verse. Now here's the point. And to the others, he said, in mine hearing. So the Heavenly Father want to hear these people scream when all hell breaks loose. The men, the women, and the children. And to the others, he said, in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare. So those are the angels, man, doing putting in that work. Okay? <laughs> Let not your eyes spare. Neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young. And that's what's coming. Both maids and little children and women. And women. So it's a heavy judgment about to come upon this place. And the Lord is going to use Esau upon many other different instruments. The Lord is going to use Esau to bring it. And that's what I'm going to read back in Isaiah 10. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And that's what we read earlier. How are we going to be taken care of? Because we have this knowledge, we have this truth. Remember in the book of Psalm 91, because you have, you have made the Heavenly Father your habitation, we will be protected. Remember we read that? Well, there you go. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. So this reminds me of First Peter 4 and 17, where the Lord said, judgment is going to begin with those that know that they're Israelites. Okay. In other words, if you're not doing the right thing, that's why we keep telling you the importance of teaching right, doing the right thing in this ministry. All right, judgment is going to first start with you. Okay, so remember what the Apostle Paul said, I keep under my body, lest I myself be a castaway. The Apostle Paul said that. Okay, so <laughs> this thing is deadly serious. This is not a joke, man. Isaiah 10 and 5 again, because the judgment is out there. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand is mine in indignation. I will send him, this is the Heavenly Father speaking through the prophet Isaiah. He said, I will send him against an hypocritical nation. That's the nation of Israel. Beginning with those that know that they're Israelites, which some of them are the biggest hypocrites on the planet earth, man. Okay? The Lord is going to bring judgment upon you. I will send him against an hypocritical nation. Even now as I speak, you got certain Israelites that are just straight up hypocrites, man. Actors, if you will. They don't really believe in, in, in this knowledge and this truth. They don't believe in these scriptures. They don't fear you. How about Shimei And you're going to hear the brother you want to speak about that, which prompted me to do this video. They don't fear you. How about Shimei Shai? Is it not written that the beginning of knowledge is, is the fear of the Heavenly Father? And when we read about the judgments that the Heavenly Father brings in the past, it makes sense to fear him and his only begotten son. The angels fear the Heavenly Father, <laughs> Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. And they're greater in power than us. Okay? So, <laughs> anyway, I will send him against an hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge to take this, a charge meaning a number, to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. Wow. So, I'll, man, you're getting ready to see some 
traumatic, traumatic shit. Like the video says, shit is fixing to get real. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the video. All right, to try to bring in that MOTB, because that's what's coming. That's the main thing, man. You know, which we all should know what the MOTB is. All right. All right. So, hey, Lord willing, hey, it'd be a brutal winner, man. And this devil does what he has to do, man. All right. And he brings martial law. Hey, you niggas going to suffer out here, man. You wicked, evil uh, Israelites, you two-thirds. Even the ones that claim to be Israelites, but that Yep, starting with them. First Peter four and seventeen. Let me bring that scripture out. I I quoted it, but it's one thing to quote it, it's a whole another thing to read it. First Peter four and seventeen. It says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of the Heavenly Father. That means with those that know that they're Israelites. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be? of them that obey not the gospel of the heavenly father that's your two-thirds on the outside all right but on the inside the lord is going to start with those that claim they're israelites but they're nothing but a fucking hypocrite they're part of the two-thirds too so the two-thirds actually starts with those that know that they're israelites but are not you know but are not doing the uh, uh doing what the heavenly father said to do that don't fear the heavenly father at the end of the day it comes down to it comes down to they do not fear yahweh shimei Shai. absolutely and you're going to hear the brother speak about that the brother you're you're wonderful without teaching all right the right doctrine you're going to be caught up in this uh, uh um um this turmoil that's coming to america man right they don't teach the right doctrine because they don't fear yahweh shimei Shai. I mean, it, it, it's not complicated. If you don't fear you how about Shimei Shai, then you're going to teach whatever you want to teach. You're going to say whatever you want to say. Okay? Because we've been out there, you know, risking our lives. I'm talking about, you know, the real men of the Lord, starting with the apostles. I got I to keep reiterating that, which is that great millstone and other brothers that teach the same doctrine, right? Okay? We've been telling y'all and warning y'all, all right, to get right. Stop bullshit, okay? Stop being wicked, man. Okay, this this devil is finna get ready to come down, having great wrath on you people, man. Cause hey, Esau ain't gonna be playing, all right? You think Esau gonna be playing with you fucking niggas, man? Esau is not gonna be playing, all right? You know, you niggas, you love to play, man. That's the problem with a nigga. Love to play. Love to joke around. Man, shit ain't so funny, man. This is serious business. Um, here it is right here. The book of Romans, the 13th chapter, the fourth verse is talking about Esau. For he is the minister of the Heavenly Father to thee for good but if thou do that which is evil that's you wicked ass niggas out there right beginning with even those that claim they're in the truth which is nothing but a bunch of hypocrites but if thou do that which is evil be afraid for he beareth not the sword in vain that's how you know he's talking about esau because what was esau's blessing genesis 27 and 40 esau's blessing was the sword so he don't bear the sword in vain. And he's very proficient. He's very good with that sword. Okay. <laughs> but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of the Heavenly Father, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. <laughs> now how more clear does it have to be? You're gonna learn that you're gonna learn that Esau is <laughs> you you diggers out there, you're gonna learn that Esau is the, the Heavenly Father's whipping stick, man. He's the Heavenly Father's whipping stick, and then the Heavenly Father gonna turn around and judge Esau. <laughs> that this is why it is written to fear the Lord. Alright? His name is Yahweh and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. <laughs> Let's move on. This devil is bloodthirsty, man. Yes, he is. Okay. Read Ezekiel, the 35th chapter. 
Blood is nothing in Esau's sight. Okay, he's a man of blood. How's he like his steak? He likes his steak bloody. <laughs> Damn near, you know, barely cooked. All right? He's a bloodthirsty man. And you niggas talking about, no, oh, well, you know, uh, uh, you can't really say that about the white man. All of us are devils. You got black devils too. Yeah, you do. You do have black devils. But the, the, <laughs> the devil himself is Esau. Eat him. That's what you niggas don't get. This devil is fucking bloodthirsty, man. He wants to, he wants to exterminate, all right, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. All right, he wants to wipe out your very existence. Do you fucking understand that, man? No, the, the majority of them don't understand that. They think he's, a, he, you know, he's all right. The white man's all right. He's all right. Yeah, okay. Uh... Let me back this brother up with scripture. Psalm, the 83rd chapter, when he was saying that, this scripture comes to mind. This is the mentality of Esau, the so-called white man, beginning with the top banking families. This is their mentality. Here it is right here. Psalm 83 and 3. And the reason why they have that mentality is because the Heavenly Father have put that mentality upon them. All right? Remember the, the, uh, the perpetual hatred that Esau had for Jacob? Going back to the serpent, you know, which was uh, Esau, okay? Uh, um, I will put enmity between thee uh, or between thy seed and her seed. The her seed was talking about Israel, all right? Thy seed talking about the seed of the serpent, which later would be known as Esau, Edom, the Edomites. So there's that perpetual hatred. And Esau hates Jacob. All right, Esau hates Jacob. Psalm 83 and 3, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. There you go. I mean, how much more plainer does it, does it have to be? This devil has a perpetual hatred for us, man. And they're supposed to because that's, the spirit that the Heavenly Father put on them. Ezekiel, the 35th chapter, uh, the, the fifth verse, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel. And they're getting ready to shed even more blood of you Israelites out there, you niggas out there, you beginning with you niggas all the way down to you so-called Mexicans, you wetbacks, okay? I'm calling you by those derogatory names because that's the names Esau have put on you. That's how they look at you. Because thou has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword. There's that sword again. In the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, which his name is Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood. So eventually Esau is going to be judged. The Lord is going to use Esau to judge his people. Then he's going to turn around and judge Esau. How powerful is that? I will prepare thee unto blood and blood shall pursue thee. Sif thou has not hated blood. See, that's, that's the point right there. Sif thou has not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. There you go. And then as you read on, it says, I will make Mount Seir, which lets you know it's talking about Esau. All right. So blood is nothing to them. And they're about to shed some serious blood. Do you understand that? Do you niggas understand that this devil wants to see you gone and eradicated, man? He wants to wipe out, like I said, he wants to wipe out your very existence, man. Yeah, that's why you had something called the Georgia Guidestones, all right, which was uh, uh, Ten Commandments, which they took it down. It was a plaque that was put up way back in 1980. I think a few years ago they took it down. Uh, it was Ten Commandments of Esau. The first commandment was, was maintain humanity under 500 million. Presently now we got almost 8 billion people. So they have a, a program called Population Reduction. And I don't have to tell you what kind of people they really want to get, you know, do away with. I mean, do I have to tell you? <laughs> so so you, it's high time for you to wake out of sleep, man. He can't the sight of you, man. Right? Even though the feeling's mutual, those of us that's in our right goddamn mind, we want to see this fucking devil eradicated too, man. Yep, yes, All right? 
You niggas got a. He will be eradicated because this devil will be eradicated because Obadiah 1 and 18. Obadiah 1 and 18. Let's get that. Obadiah 1 and 18, baby. We want to see this devil eradicated. And he will be eradicated. Even Job, our forefather Job said, The eye that see him shall see him no more. Obadiah 1 18, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. So, like I said, the Lord's going to use Esau to punish our people, but then he's going to turn around and punish Esau, using us to do it. All right, beginning with the elect, the elect of the nation of Israel, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord have spoken it. So this is a future prophecy. This is going to take place in the kingdom. After Esau serves us for a thousand years in slavery, hardcore, brutal slavery, we're going to turn around and do away with them. And this is why Job said, the eye that see him shall see him no more. Okay, let's get back to the video. Hey, you Israelites got to get in that mindset, man. Without Yahweh Shah, we will be done, man. Hey, no flesh, the scriptures say, no flesh will be saved, okay, if uh, um, the Lord didn't come back, man. You know, the, the rate he's running the earth, right, ain't no, ain't no uh, fucking way that life can go on, that uh, uh, um, life can exist the way this devil's running the earth, man. Yeah. But you niggas want to fucking stay here, man. I want to back the brother up to destroy them. That have destroyed the earth. As a matter of fact, you know what? You can find that, you brothers out there, you can find that and read that. Um, I want to back the brother up. Let's go to Isaiah 24. Isaiah 24 and 5. Uh, Isaiah 24 and 4. To back up what he just said. The earth moaneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Right. Who's ruling the earth right now? The wicked. Esau, Edom. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And thereby they have defiled the earth with their many inventions. Okay. They have brought the earth to damn near the, the brink of extinction. Okay. The earth is defiled, man. And it's getting worse every day. That's why Yahweh I got to come and clean this earth up. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws. There you go. Changed the ordinance. Broken the everlasting covenant. And that's why when Yahweh comes back and clean this earth up, we're going to rule this earth according to the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. The law is going to be in, in full effect. And there are many laws that the Heavenly Father gave us. There's laws on how to take care of the earth, how to take care of the soil, we're going to, all those laws are going to be in full effect in the kingdom, man. Absolutely. The only law that's going to be done away with is the law of sacrifice. All right. And that was done away with in Yahweh Shai. But all the other laws, they, they, st they, they still stand and they will stand in the kingdom. Uh, the sixth verse, therefore have the curse devoured the earth. See? So right now the earth is under a curse. Isaiah the 14th chapter. All right. Even the trees are complaining to the heavenly father about this man. Because who's the one going around cutting down the trees? Esau. Okay, so it's called uh, deforestation. Look it up, deforestation. Therefore have the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. That's after the destruction. And that's a beautiful thing, because that fire is going to be used to clean the earth, cleanse the earth, cleanse the skies, Cleanse the ozone layer, which Esau have polluted. Yeah, Esau got to go, man. He, he just got to go. That's the only answer. The only thing that makes sense. Okay, you you want to make you want to you want to make your bed here in America. The scriptures say this is not our rest. Yep, Micah two okay? and ten. Micah two and ten. This is not our rest, but you want to make it your rest, man. This devil is getting ready to come down, having great wrath, pursuing the revelations, the twelfth chapter and the twelfth verse, man. And you niggas out here fucking playing. Niggas out here getting ready for fucking Christmas. All right? <laughs> fucking Thanksgiving and shit. All right? And you know good and well that shit pagan, man. 
You got niggas out here even admit it's pagan, but they still celebrate it, man. That shows you that you niggas got to fucking go, man. You got to die, man. I, I can't stress it enough, man. The only remedy for two-thirds of the nation of Israel is death, man. Okay? And the Lord told us to pray not for this people. All right? Pray not for this people. It is right here. Uh, Jeremiah 7 and 16. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. See? So that's our people, man. Don't forget about them. The only ones we care about are those that know this knowledge, this truth, the hopeful elect. Everybody else, fuck them. All right, <laughs> pray not thou for this people. I mean, how more clear does it have to be? Hey, shit is about to get, hit the fan, and you niggas still uh, 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 playing around and thinking shit is sweet. Shit ain't gonna be sweet when you see fucking grocery stores with no food on the shelves. Shit ain't gonna be sweet uh, uh, when, when you ain't gonna uh, be able to drive your fucking car. Yep. When the diesel shortages uh, 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 come to a full blown reality. All right, blackouts happen. Shit ain't gonna be sweet, man. Okay? Mm -hmm. See a brother uh post a scripture. I'm gonna bring this out. Yeah, I quote uh, I had quoted this. This is Matthew 24. And if a major blackout happens during the winter months, that's even more hell, man. You know. When people freezing to death in their own apartments, their own houses. Because some of these homes are, he are heated by um electricity. So if they bring out the electricity and then the, you know whoo it's getting ready to pop off man 24 says for their show arise false uh anointings or hamashias or it says here christ right and false prophets and and shall shoot great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect right so the elect is not going to be uh, deceived, though, man. Okay? The elect is going to hold firm and hold fast to the faith, and we're going to endure. Lord willing, I'm part of that number, man. But the rest of you Israelites... Yeah, me too. Lord willing, we're part of that number. That's our hope. This is why the Apostle Paul said it best. He said, we are prisoners of hope. All right? And this is why we, as it is written, we, we give diligence in this ministry to make our calling and election sure. You know, to cement our hope, we give diligence. And and what is diligence? We do these videos, constantly doing these edifying videos. We make sure our videos are edifying and, and comforting. And above all, we make sure we say the right thing in Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Why? Because we fear Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. And we definitely do the street ministry. All right? Those of us that are able-bodied, we go out there on the street and do the work as is commanded us. No, no, no excuses. All right? No excuses. Okay, the scriptures speak about guys who are given excuses to go and do the work. All right, you're going to continue to be deceived right up to your uh, very destruction. Okay? That's why a lot of you, you're going to take the MOTB, man. You're going to take um, um, the Karak, which is, uh, you know, the mark of the you-know-what. You're going to take that. A lot of you women going to take it. A lot of you women that ain't right gonna take it. it, it that uh video the elder out of um New York did, Armawan Gabar, that was a, a scary video, man. Mm -hmm. He had a dream about uh some some brothers in the truth, or maybe sisters in the truth took the uh the M O T B man. You know? So that Yeah, and I'll be doing a video on that. Like I said earlier, I watched the whole video, Armawan Gabar's video. So I'll be uh, reacting to that that video so uh, stay tuned that should put more fear in our hearts man okay to to uh want to trust more in you how about shimmy i was shot man okay because we cannot fold and take and give it to this man's system take that take this man's uh chip man take this man's karagma okay because no, if no. we do that 
hey, the Lord is going to destroy us, man. And we don't want to feel that. And that's pursuant to Revelation 14 and 9. And what kind of life is it for you to live with some goddamn electronic device inside of you? That's madness. This devil can go fuck himself about that CHIP, all right? Straight up and down, man. That's madness to live a life like that. You got some radiate, radiation, a radiated act, active device inside of you, pumping radiation within your... Man, what kind of life is that, man? That's madness. Okay? That's just straight up and down madness. So that's not part of the equation, man. The only equation is tell this devil, go fuck yourself and uh, wait for your Havishai to come and destroy the society, man. And then, then we'll be able to live. Then we'll, then we're gonna begin to live. That fire, man. Okay, we we ain't gonna want to feel that fire. I know I don't. That's right. Okay, but evidently mm -hmm. these other camps do. All right, like That's Sakari, uh, IUS, IUIC, ISUBK. They want to feel that fire, man, because they don't fear the Lord. Okay, they don't fear Yahweh, why Yahweh shot. And that's where it starts, brothers. That's where it starts. Fear in Yahweh Shem Shai. As it is written, well, let me get it, Proverbs 1 and 7. So we thank Yahweh Shem Shai for giving us the spirit of fear and the spirit of faith. We praise Yahweh Shem Shai for giving us that. Those of us that know and understand uh, this truth. Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Yeah, like he, like he's saying, like the brother's saying, all these other camps, they do the shit that they do because they don't fear the Lord. Having rapped, well, he, you know what? Let me let the brother, <laughs> let me let the brother put it down, man. Hold up. IUIC, IUIC, they want to feel that fire, man, because they don't fear the Lord. Okay? They don't fear Yahweh, why Yahweh shot. We fear you how uh, why you how shot. That's why we go out on the streets week in and week out, making our body a living sacrifice for the Lord, man. That's what it says. Okay, putting our lives on the line, putting our jobs on the line, a family on the line, whatever, man, whatever, whatever it takes for salvation. Okay, wherever wherever it takes to uh, uh, get those uh, crowns on our heads, man. Wherever it takes to get eternal life, you know. Yeah, come. On. They don't fear you. How about smell shot? All right, whatever it takes for salvation, also because the scriptures say, uh, "Work out your uh, own salvation with fear and trembling." Are these other camps in fear? Or are they trembling? Hell no, man. The only ones that's um, in fear and trembling are the, like I said, the real men of the Lord teaching the sound doctrine, which starts with our apostles here at Great Millstone, man. We're the only ones that have fear and trembling, man. These other camps not fear not being fearful or trembling. They think this is a joke. That's why they make rap videos and shit. There you go. Okay. They make rap videos and, and um, um, have uh, strippers at Passovers and shit, man. Yeah, all these gimmicks, you know, unnecessary gimmicks that the ministry does not need. Like the scriptures speak about being superfluous. All right. And look up the word superfluous. You know, you're bringing in stuff into the ministry that, that is unnecessary, is not needed. You know, just teach the word, man. You know, just teach the word, film it, teach the word, and that's it. But, you know, some guys just got to learn the hard way, I guess. Record cookouts and shit, thinking shit is sweet. All right, thinking um, this is a place of mirth. This is our, uh, our rest. This right. is our land of rest. No, man. As long as we over here in Babylon, we're going to catch hell, man. We're going to catch it from Esau, man. Esau is going to put hell on us, man. And, and that's the mindset we should have. Arm yourselves likewise with the sufferings. Let's get that. First Peter. This is what the scriptures direct us. You know, scriptures speak about instruction, man. You're receiving instruction and there are guys who just don't want to receive that instruction. There you go. First Peter 4 and 1. For as much then as Yahweh Shai have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Exactly. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. And that's why I always say this truth, this knowledge is about suffering. It's about suffering. And through the suffering we are purged. We are cleansed. Just like Yahweh Shai, he himself was purged and cleansed through the sufferings. Hebrews 2 and 10. 
suffer righteously for the name of Yahweh Shem Yahshai. He's really going to put hell on us, all right, when he starts to roll on us, man. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, the persecution is going to be the ultimate form of catching hell, man. Right. Okay? So the But we will be delivered from that because we have made the, he the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bar Shem Yahushai, our what? Our habitation. That's in Psalm 91. So we trust in the words of Yahweh, Bar Shem Yahushai. Remember, he's not a man that he should lie. All right, so at this point, I'll let it go. I didn't plan for the video to be that long, but hopefully you hung in there. You got the edification out of it. If you did, leave me a, co a comment in the comment box, and it's on to the next one.